This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How's it all going? It's going great. Uh, so we, we had a little bit of a layover gap here. <laughs> That's right, because schedules are hard. Schedules are hard. Um, yeah. Ideally, we would have uh, recorded right after uh, the last pinball show. Um, but hey, you know things happen that's right i do appreciate everyone's asking if we if we're okay <laughs> because we because we didn't record a show we're not okay <laughs> but clearly we must be dead yeah um, you know i know that happens with right. um with uh channels that have been like they're every week and they always launch Clock at the same work. time every week and then all of a sudden they're like mysteriously gone everybody's like oh my god did they get pulled <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> No one's told us to go away yet. Yeah, no and such even luck. Even if they did, we wouldn't listen. So. <laughs> <laughs> we just make a show for me and Jared. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we just do it for ourselves. For that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Anything uh, interesting going on in uh, your neck of the woods there? Well, this week will be the last week you see this background. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because my house is getting fully painted next week. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to be going with a nice Dulux Lexicon half, which is sort of like a little bit of an off-gray white. Um, throughout the house and uh yeah it should be by the next episode we should have a very different view in here oh um, let's so, say goodbye to the blue wall everybody the blue wall. i'm i'm disappointed that nobody's gone in there and done bad things with my blue screen well yeah, i mean you know you could always just go to a chroma, chroma key green and uh let, I, I could then that would be the obvious thing. what you want done yeah, that's, you know, because, you know, why not paint a, a room completely for a podcast so I can go full green screen? You know, you know people do. <laughs> oh, I, I've seen their rooms. Like, there's some, oh, you know, rooms where they do VR playthroughs and the guy stands there in front of the, the screen playing in the background. Yeah. All green. It's like, wow, that's some commitment right there. Can you, can you imagine walking into do. that room? You'd just be like, wow, like, my oh, eyes. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it'd be so like, oh, jeez, need sunglasses to enter this room. You yeah, know, if, that's re they're really green. If, that's if really we green, had the green, subscriber that base that was uh, making YouTube pay us, I would probably do it. <laughs> I probably would as well. Uh, and I'd probably be using much better streaming gear than I am at the moment. Oh, well, that's um, a given. Yes. Yeah, we'd Absolutely. be using all sorts of amazing tech, which means that you know, maybe finally I'd be able to hear the audio in all the uh, playthroughs that we play. <laughs> <laughs> Although probably not. Like, probably honestly, not. I mean, we're going like, to have to hire a professional at some point to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we could be paying thousands of dollars and still not have that. So, you know, but yeah, I, it's I, going. That's I, the, that's the difference. I I think uh, when you finally see me and Jared with um uh, uh gamer chairs, yeah, uh, that's when uh, that are like specific. I, I forget what the main company is that we always you know you always see kind of the the gamers playing with. It's like that's when you know we finally gotten sponsored. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep, but. Honestly, those gaming chairs are horrible to sit in. I don't know how these gamers sit in them. I, I had one once. I know. And, and I, you don't I, anymore. <laughs> I don't anymore. They're horrible. Yeah. Do not want. Yep. So, sorry. No no brand affiliation for me. I'll be sticking with my nice ergonomic chair for my back. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting old, right? Yeah. When you get old, yeah. you know, things I, I tried way. replacing this chair uh, last year. And because yeah. uh, it's it's old and it doesn't have the, the cush anymore, and mm. I uh, I went to the store. I sat in a whole bunch of chairs. Didn't care for any of them. Yeah. And then I also didn't care for the price. <laughs> and then <laughs> yes. and so then I ordered one off of Amazon. Yeah, folks, don't order um don't order a chair that you've never sat in. No, um, never do that. Because I built it and I sat in it and I just went ew. No, nope. not no nope. good at all. And mm. did not want and returned it and. <laughs> yep. The the thing is with chairs, and I think we've said this before, is like they are like your that they're your connection with the ground when you're sitting. Yes. So you <laughs> all your weight is on you know your your butt. So you got to make sure your chair supports that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they're like shoes. Buy the best that you can afford. Um. <laughs> with when it comes to chairs. I would just say uh, buy the yeah. most comfortable that you can afford. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Best equals comfortable. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, so what are we doing today? Well, as you may have noticed by the uh, title page there, we're going to talk about World Cup Soccer 94. 
Um, oh, it feels good to actually be able to call it World Cup Soccer and not Championship World Soccer Challenge. or whatever that World was. Challenge, World Challenge, World Champion, yeah. What yeah, was World Champion TV? Soccer, I think, was what it yeah, was Yeah, World there. Champion Soccer. Um, over in, uh, back in TPA days. Uh, so we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be doing also playthrough of that. Um, yeah. But before we get around to that, we had a uh, different request, and that was for us to check out a game called the Pinball Wizard. Um, yes. Which this is... request uh, came through our Discord, um, one of our um, fully paid up blockade members. Uh, <laughs> Can you be fully paid up? Yeah, you just it's really come along. easy, right? You yeah, just... you just come along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ta -da, yeah you're fully paid. You're fully paid. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, so one of those members came in and said, "Hey, uh, there's this game out. It looks interesting. Uh, why don't you see if you can get um, the developer to give you some keys and and do a do a playthrough of it?" So that's what we did. Yeah, uh, we, we actually we, um, we, Frosty we, Pop is the studio. Yeah. Um, mm. So uh, we were provided keys for the Steam version. Now, interestingly enough, I uh, finally stepped into the modern world. <laughs> Got rid of my old phone. Um, which was an iPhone 7 Plus, and now I've oh, doubled geez. the generation and I'm in a 14 Plus. Oh, um, <laughs> geez. I know, I a didn't, world of difference. It's not an incredibly giant world of difference, just because... Well, it is Apple. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's not going to be that different. The size is virtually the same. Um, I mean, there's a little mm -hmm. more screen real estate, but the physical size of the phone is identical. Um, mm -hmm. The screen is obviously, you know, Brighter, nicer. Uh, a little bit nicer. Um, I haven't messed with the camera yet. I literally have used it Just all of two up. days. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, I'm not familiar with all the uh, the ins and outs of there. But because of that, Apple provided me with uh, Apple Arcade for three months free. And hey, lo and behold, the Pinball Wizard is also an Apple Arcade game. So if you're already subscribing to the Apple Arcade, um, just give a search for the the Pinball Wizard, and you could download and play. For have a go. I yeah. shouldn't say for free, but as part of your subscription, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say that it is available in uh, in both those form factors. I don't believe it's on the Epic Games Store. I it's not on Epic Games, but it is on Switch. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, they've released it on Switch as well, apparently. Okay. Uh, so there, uh, it's. Let's have a look at it, eh? We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk we'll, through we'll, the reasons we'll, why. We'll take a look at that. Um, actually, I'm going to flip you over to Jared while I get my uh, gear set up here. Mm. So, yeah, so the design, the developer of this game is Frosty Pop, um, and uh, they, like we mentioned, have been pushing this game out to a number of different platforms. Um, it's on mobile, as Chris mentioned. It's on Switch, Steam, um, and I'm not sure about consoles. There may actually be some some support on consoles too. So they are trying to make this game widely available um on all platforms so um it's it reminds me and you'll see this i think yeah once it loads <laughs> once it loads um it's oh there it is it's got a, a quite a, a nice aesthetic to it like the the art style is very cartoon like um and yeah it looks it looks quite nice so let's this is the main landing page here you got a number of things down the 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 left so we might go through what those are first sure um, um i mean basically tower is just uh running through the uh the actual gameplay daily dungeon yep. is just a daily challenge uh, i haven't unlocked yep. any other dungeon skills you're going to have different skill options that are available to you uh mm. as power-ups um i haven't uh, really played much through this game yet um, mm. and uh, I'm just going to show you what uh, I'm not going to bother with the very first level because that's exceedingly boring uh, it is quite, <laughs> but I'm going to show low. you just like what the second level here is uh, so you've got a little guy that um, is the pinball wizard and he acts as your pinball and then it's just basically about uh, hitting slime blocks uh, because yep. they are hiding a key that unlocks your door in the background. You can and build up some of your power-ups, with which is the uh, green energy bar. And you can build up health, which is uh, obviously the hearts, which is 
<laughs> it's funny. It's the heart bucket, but it's actually collecting those little uh, diamonds. Yeah. Well, the diamonds are your, uh, I guess, sort of, uh, in a way, XP. They, they, they work towards your XP, because as you can see, this is a sort of like a dungeon crawler. It uses a dungeon crawler aesthetic, um, and it's obviously definitely RPG-like in the way it works. So the whole idea behind the game is you're, you're climbing up a, a dungeon, a tower, basically. Um, and now I got the key. Yeah, now you got the key. And now it starts counting down. You'll see in the top right, there's a timer counting down. So you can either continue to um, flip around, try and get all the things you've unlocked, or at the end of the timer, you'll just go to the next level anyhow. So there's no real penalty. And I will say that um, in the later levels, that's, that mechanic actually helps you in that if you're surrounded by enemies and you've got the key, and you've qualified the key, all you need to do is just sit there and wait for the timer to unlock so you don't die. Because you can get the key, qualify yourself for the next level, and still die before you get out of the dungeon, which is one one of the, the, the bad parts of the game. Uh, it's unfortunately not the only bad part. Of no. The game, but so <laughs> we'll... We'll try and well, show I mean, you we this can, now. I can start sharing basically so that you can kind of start keeping an eyeball. Um, the physics on this are not precise. No. Um, it's not that this. It's not that it's floaty. It's that I really feel like I don't. You don't have, really have a lot of control. No. That's um, the the frustrating thing. It's sort of. I think the reason why is because of the fact that the actual wizard ball is walking, and for it to animate properly and behave correctly they've had to make some sacrifices in the way that's represented yeah um in in the physics to well, keep like that I'll, aesthetic i'll just show you right now i need to get to that upper play field right so you yep. think it'd so be you... a simple flip so i go and i go Flip. i don't make it no <laughs> so this is where the the power-ups come into yeah. play and then then that happens right and that happens. yeah great so I'm gonna aim myself so, into there. There I go. I got up there. So, I so here is. Oh no! I went back down. Yeah, you're back down. So what you'll need to do now is use the B button to dash up. So like that, and then up you go. But and somehow now, I didn't get into the door. Oh yeah! And now down, we go back down. But and now you have to build up your yeah. energy again, so you can do that. But it's just and like the on-the-fly shooting. I feel like all I'm ever doing is just going side to side. Missing. It's like I'm on a it's like, I'm on a seesaw. Yeah, it's like your flippers are weak, and it really like that's that's problem one with the game. And I'm sure, like when I was thinking about this aspect of the game, I'm going, okay, yeah, I have to stop myself from thinking this is pinball because it's it's not pinball. It uses a pinball aesthetic, but it's it's not really pinball in the fact that if it was real pinball you could do a lot more precision with aiming and stuff like that and you really can't now this is the other frustrating part with this game so when those blob things see you and they lock eyes on you that's when they turn into red blobs and they they will kill you or they'll take off your life points but the problem is that if your weak shot flipper gets it up near them and they see you then what happens is they turn red and they attack you and there's no way you can escape. So like, I, I've got killed a number of times in this game by just being in the proximity of these blobs and they see you and you just sort of, you can't escape because your balls just got up to the, the apex of it coming back down again and you can't do anything. Like now basically, see yeah. that? Like there was no way you could escape that. And no. I think, I'm trying to think, okay, again, I had to like switch off my, well, this is pinball, uh, like, you know, the pinball rolls and that's what the pinball does. Is it a case that you maybe need to use the B button again to like zoom out of the way and change where you go in the game? Um, but again, I'm going, it just feels unsatisfying. And I, I remember getting to that point and getting done by those blobs and actually feeling really angry 
yeah. because it's like I I have no choice in the matter about what's going on here. I'm getting dead like that. See, no. you, you're there. You, you're sort of he's seeing you and your ball is up there. You have no escape. It just feels really frustrating as a gameplay mechanic for me, which is annoying because it shouldn't be like that. Now, I don't know if the levels uh, shapes get changed much. But a lot of these early levels is just circles, and that's where I say I just do like feel like I'm, yeah, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in a circle. Um, they and, they and, do. And here's um, where we're trying to get up a ramp, and look at that! I went up the ramp and I blasted right past the doorway. Yeah, so there's no vacuum no. where the door is. You've got to like, and the thing is, there's no variability in that B, that dash move. Like no. you can't half power it. So I'm like, um, am I supposed to soft shot it, or what's the deal? Yeah, I don't also, know. Also, the me the mechanic of aiming that that thing is really frustrating as well, because it this like you have the little spinning reticle going around you, and you got to sort of like preempt without any sort of aiming dot reticle or anything where you're going to end up in the playfield. Now, there's other games solve that by actually putting like a puzzle bobble style aiming pathway, so you know that where you're going to shoot is where you're going to get it. I mean, Zombie Rollers does it. Um, and see, that's frustrating. You hit something, you flew straight over the flippers, yeah. and you had no control over that. That's That shouldn't happen. Like, you should never lose control of the ball, in this case, the wizard, to a point where you have no control over the behavior of it. Like, it's just a bad mechanic. Um, and there you go. <laughs> Off you go again. Not only like, did you get Okay, so look damage. at this. How am I supposed to get to that door? What's the shot? to get to the door you have got to go around to the left and roll into it i think i don't think you can i don't think you can actually and you think you can direct shot it yeah no oh no you got in so here's another one that's different in shape it's still sort of round but it's got like the lower and upper play field yeah. now this level is is a pain because you've got to get you got to dash past these enemies to get up there. And see that? Look at that. You just lost nearly all your life because you were in the vicinity of those blobs. And you had no control over the matter. So, <laughs> I died a lot on this one. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, and you're, and you're dead. There you go. Because you rolled into one because you had no control over it. it. You know, arguably, except if you use the B button to dash away from it. But it's like, it seems... I, th I think that is the mechanic that the designers want you to use here. They want you to essentially use B a bit like tilt and they want you to zoom right. away, but it's it's not at all intuitive. Like no. it's not something that in the heat of gameplay you gravitate to do. So let's see what a daily dungeon looks like. It looks like a lot like pretty much every other <laughs> one. Um, and the, the thing that obviously I can't hear, but you can all hear watching the video is the music. Very repetitive. The music is exactly the same no matter where you are. Um, and that gets a bit tiresome after a while. And there you go. Look at that. Take a nice chunk of life off there. And now that one you luckily killed. So. All right. So you got to jam. And yeah, things like, you know, flicking back like you're doing there. Um, it's possible, but then you get stuck in a loop like that. So. Yeah. I'd say if I was to summarize the controls in this, I would give it a one word review and say unsatisfying <laughs> is how I would describe it. Um, which in a pinball game is not what you want to hear. So um, what I'm <clears throat> then going to... Oh, hey, look, there's another area over here. Yeah, there's another room over here. So um, this is a good example of different designs. But once um, you're in the actual play field, it's the same play field. Look, it's a circle again. Yep. Well, because you're in a tower, so you climb up a tower, so... Yeah, but again, that's that repetitive factor. Yeah. Um, I guess that's just the design aesthetic in this particular case. Like, you're you're in a tower, you're going up. But I get what you're saying. Like, I, I guess there's not much they could do about that um, as, a, as a problem to solve. But... And then you're back down here again, and you can actually shoot up between those flippers if you can get angle on it. Um, or dash up between them if you want to take a shortcut up there. And now, what you've got now is the A power up. So, see how you got the, um, the little ball dash feature? Oh, something just lowered. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so now you got the dash function. So if you can get up to the top and then get over to the other side of the play field. So what is that? Uh, Another curious. Oh, or, okay, so trap up. On the, so see if you can trap. Now press A. And now aim the thing at a enemy. So now you've got a secondary pinball that comes out. Now, oh, except for it just uh, here, it's not a permanent power up. So oh. and now you got to try and get over there again. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Oh, really? <laughs> um, so trap up again and try and try and get. See, this is like you're rattling around. You don't have any control, and this is particularly bad. Like when you're down this area. Now see that that mechanic with that um, ball that you can shoot out and aim, that, uh, spoiler alert, that just becomes how you play the game from now on. Oh. Because because what happens is, to avoid any um, enemies and any damage from random attacks from enemies because you have no control over the ball, all you're doing now is just using the A button to launch a ball and shooting the enemy. So you just shoot the bomb and... Um, and you're just basically using that pinball to do all the work for you now. Well, okay. that, look, that's how I played it from this point onwards. Uh, okay. Because I, there's there's a level in there that essentially demands that you play it like that. And until you work it out, it's very frustrating. Um, so yeah, you get up into the later levels and that's literally all you're doing. To stay safe and not die randomly, that's all you do. You just use the A button and that extra ball, and it's grossly unsatisfying. Hmm. Um, I mean, there's a there's a risk reward. You could actually roll around the play field and use the dash button to plow onto enemies, but it's too risky because you have no control over the ball after you've launched around and you're rattling around the play field. So the only way you can really safely play the game is with the A button. Yeah, and it's just it's not at all enjoyable to play. Um, I do think it uh, makes for a better mobile game than obviously a sit down with a controller and play game. Um, mm. Price of on Steam is seven ninety nine. Seems a bit steep <laughs> uh, for well, what look, the game is, but I think like seven ninety nine. You know, it, it, I mean, if it was double that, and then no. But for seven ninety nine, that's not a lot to pay, and you might look, you might find some satisfaction in the game somehow. I certainly didn't, um, but maybe. Or, but, you know, if you can get it for half price, then yeah, okay, okay. If it's three fifty, sure. If it's three fifty, yeah, look, you know, it's worth it's worth then, a shot for three fifty. You get some enjoyment out of it, you know. Um, but like I said, if you've got Apple Arcade, try it out there. Um, yeah, get if you got a power, give it a go. Um, give it a go. But I think honestly, the other problem a... is that we're having played um, Rolls of the Realm. Rolls of the Realm Volume Two. Yeah. Now uh, that Union. that's much more satisfying. <laughs> way more satisfying. Like yeah, I went on to that after playing this, going surely, like th this. What what's what is wrong here? And as soon as I picked up Rolls of the Realm Reunion. It's it clicked to me as saying control and accuracy. Mm -hmm. That is the thing that makes one of these games, and that's not what the pinball wizard has. No, because even no, with even not. if the physics are you know what they are, um, yeah. if you have control over your aim, that makes a world of difference. You can you can adjust mentally to the physics. Um, yes, but when you can't get a control, good control over the ball either. Um, that's where it just drives me. It drives me nuts. And I mean, to me, it reminded me of you know playing snowball. Um, yeah, even snowball had better control yeah. than this. Now the other thing that you, because you're not up to the level that I am in the game, because yeah. I I slog through using that A button to destroy the enemies, <sighs> uh, all the way up to the the first boss. Now, the, what the first boss does is um, it swallows the ball and it swallows this orb thing. And that's the thing that you've got to hit to destroy the boss. Now, you've got to do this multiple times. So the only safe way to do it is to use the A button, aim, shoot the thing, and wait for it to reset. Because it constantly tops up your, your mana bar so you can do the special moves during these levels. So all you're doing is you're trapping up, you're shooting and repeating. 
I'd like to say about forty five times oh, to destroy to, to destroy this boss using this method of play. Yeah. Um and you know, if you don't, you've got lightning bolts that randomly appear on the play field that zap you. Um so it's almost telling you, no, don't risk going around the play field. Don't actually play pinball. Mm-hmm. Just use the A button to shoot a secondary pinball around. It's like oh, okay. Anyhow, so I finally defeated this boss, like slogged through, got to the end, um, and I got the the orb and you have to shoot into the orb um and then shoot this sort of plinth, I presume. It wasn't clear in the game what you had to do. I presume it was you had to shoot the plinth after you collected the ball. So I shot I made a shot for the ball up there, missed the plinth, straight down the middle, game ended had to do the entire thing again. Oh. I nearly threw the controller <laughs> through the screen. And I just I just went, nope, that's it. Can't yeah. can't play this anymore. No. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's where they lost me. Yeah. So that's that's a bad sign. When you make a player that frustrated for doing something that they had not much control over. Like it's not even like a like when you win the game, you should have a pin like a, you know a post that pops up mm-hmm. during the flippers that prevents you from losing your ball after you complete the goal you shouldn't be cheaped out and it's not like you get another chance it's like your health bar <laughs> and your game's over it's like <laughs> yeah so they lost me there yeah and that that's why it's a two out of five for me for this game <laughs> like it's got um... promise but not not as it currently stands. It's. I just know that I played. You saw what I played too. I got up to that eighth level, and just mm-hmm. kind of went. Eh, I've got other things I'll play. It just didn't. Yeah. It it didn't grab me. By that point, no. uh, that early, and I felt like I knew it was going to frustrate me already. Mm. Um, and it just made me not want to continue anymore. Yep. So. Um, I don't know. Like I said, because it's on my phone, maybe I'll uh, hammer it through a little bit more. Uh, It'd be interesting to see if the gameplay experience feels different on the phone. Um, I mean, interestingly enough, you do have to hold your phone in landscape to play. Okay. So it's not um, not portrait mode there. That makes sense because it is a landscape orientation. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it looks identical. Uh, physics mm. play identical. Everything feels identical. I mean, uh, but I think... You know, doing a a dungeon and then putting the phone away, doing something else. Hey, you've got a minute, quick minute, do a dungeon, quick minute. You know what I mean? So yeah. doing it piecemeal like that, you're less likely to uh, get that you know long-term player frustration. And yeah. I, I feel like it's more designed for that than, like I said, to I'm going to sit down and I'm going to hammer this thing for a while. It doesn't feel yeah. like that kind of game at all. No, it's going to feel frustrating if you play it like that. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. Maybe it's designed to be casual. It's designed to, yeah, I've just got five minutes. Let's yeah. go and play this. Let's do a dungeon. Maybe do the day, daily challenge uh, and then put your phone away. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. But that doesn't get, that doesn't take away from the control issues in the no. game and the overall gameplay experience that you get in the game. And look, if, if the developers watching this and they've got feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Like if we've got stuff wrong, if you've got the game and you've downloaded and played it and you've had a different experience than us, look, tell us if we're right or wrong on this because maybe we're just doing it wrong. (laughs) Maybe we don't get what the developer is wanting us to do here with the game. So, All right. That being said, we're going to switch gears here. We're going to go on to the uh, the main event, which would be World Cup Soccer. Um, Yeah, that's right. uh, This one, (laughs) unfortunately, you get to see me do some setup here because I can't do it without the screen being active. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So So I'm going to come over here. La di da. We're going to go bye bye to that logo, and we're going to go hello to this logo. Just like that. Just like that. And then I got to also change a little bit where my game capture is coming from. La, da, da, da. Here we so go. while uh, while you're doing this, well, I'll talk through some. There we go. Here I'll I'll feature you go. so you can do exactly that. So World Cup um, ninety World Cup Soccer ninety four. It is the um, based on the uh, the belly table um, 
uh, and it is <laughs> it's quite surprisingly well not if you see the price uh, but <laughs> um, it features all FIFA livery branding and um, trademarks of that time which is why it commands the ten dollar price tag um, or the one hundred ticket type price tag. Do, do do the currency conversion in your own region, yeah. but it's about ten bucks for me in Australia. Probably about eight dollars something or no, seven dollars. No, it's, it's ten here. Yeah, because it, okay. it's a hundred. It's a hundred tickets. hundred tickets. 100, it's hundred tickets is ten dollars. So. It's ten bucks. Yeah. And you know, like, yeah, honestly, in a word, it's worth it. Um, you know, obviously. Chris and I got keys for this game, um, uh, or we had leftover tickets from the last time that Zen um, gave us the ticket dump, so we were able to purchase this without charge. Honestly, though, even if I had to buy this outright, I would, because it's a it's a really really nice um, conversion. It improves on what Farsight did with their conversion of the game. Number one, obviously, it's got all the branding in it, um, and um, it, it plays really well. Um, so, yeah, without, well, some some, some ado, further ado, I'm like waiting some, for it to, some ado. Waiting for it to show up here. Why is it not showing up? Oh, I know why. Hold on. I got to do one other. Apparently, my game capture went to Epic Launcher and not Pinball FX. Ah, uh, the go. wrong screen. There we go. That uh, would be the difference. Be the hey, there it is. Look at that. Here it is. <laughs> well, hey, while we're uh, while we're just sitting here waiting for it to play, why don't we take a closer look at this table? Yeah. Goodness gracious, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> oh, such a good-looking recreation. Of I'm this just table. saying, and and we keep on mentioning this. It's just because Zen uses high-res graphics everywhere. There is yep. not a spot. A low-res texture anywhere on no. this. It just it looks is. really nice. Um, yeah. I mean, you can clearly just see everything. Uh, it's crisp. There's no um, There's no sign of anything low texture. No. Those plastics, um, which, you know, Bally has lots of the clear plastics. They um, do love the clear they plastics. They are the gorgeous looking. They're not just, they're not milky. Um, they've no. actually got that reflection. Um, yeah, that shine that moves around and stuff. So yeah, what no, it's great. that coin? Just go over to the left where the uh, the coin toss is. So it's a little coin that's a graphical extra. What does it say? PFX. PFX. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, graphical extras. You got the coin flip there. You've got, you got striker right striker. there. Uh, you've got the uh, whirlwind going over. The, I think that's a whirlwind. Um, yeah. Something like that. Going over the it's soccer ball. There's nothing back there. Down at the bottom of the oh, table, there... you've got the actual World Cup trophy. And, and then you've got some boots. Some boots. There now, go. there is uh, the the goalie in graphical enhancements has a little swishy motion on it. So it's got like little like shadowing going on it that's not there in the um, normal oh. version. But it's like literally that's the only difference. All right. Now, so go, go ahead and start playing um, if you like. Oh, I um, see the swishy motion you're mentioning there. Yeah, okay. a little swishy motion. Yeah, yeah that's literally it. Stick it off. It's not no there squishies. anymore. No squishies. Yeah, yeah, no squishies. Um, so, um, the interesting thing is that uh, I'm kind of a little bit surprised, to be honest, about the graphical extras in this. Striker does surprisingly little in this like I would expect that if they got the the permission to use Striker that he'd be jumping all over the table like um, Indiana Jones right and going over to the goal area and like you know hovering over the goal and stuff like that like all he does is stay in that one spot it's quite static I don't mind Which, that <laughs> uh, well I don't need see I'm of the opinion I like graphical extras that um, bring a little bit of life to the table but I don't want them necessarily distracting on the table. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in the case of, like, Indiana Jones, where we noticed, you know, his whip crack is what makes the uh, drop Rock targets targets. drop, and that that's delays. That, that's something that should never happen. But, yeah. like... I'm going to... Hold on. I'm going to pause right there. So, I'm trying to launch right. the ball right now. Right. Zen, please. Um, there are different spring tensions on your plungers. 
this thing, the difference between shooting the back of the coin toss and the front of the coin toss is so minuscule. A couple of millimeters. Yeah. Um, it, it just is needs, very... It doesn't need to be Twilight Zone loose. It needs to... Uh, but it needs to be looser than uh, a regular tight spring. Um, yeah. And I mentioned that right now just because... Uh, there are other tables where that spring tension is important. Um, Very important, yeah. For what you're playing. So. Yeah. So it, you do need varying strengths there, because it is quite hard to get the, the skill shots in there, so it needs yeah. quite a loose spring on the particular game. Um, so, I mean, it, from a visual extras perspective, they could have done something else with goalie. Um, I think, like, that's maybe not because it's an interactive element, but it just feels like maybe the goalie... You want an actual goalie? Yeah, why not? See, have, a, have an actual goalie moving backwards and forwards. Like, instead of that thing, have a goalie dashing backwards and forwards left and right across the goal. You know, that's something you could do. So um, here, I'm going to try, try and hit that middle... The, the other thing that frustrates off. me here is that, and this is on all... All Belly Williams games that have a skill shot, um, it, you don't get the the top-down view of the plunger guide mm -hmm. in any of these games, and it's actually important. Like you can, particularly if the physics are consistent, which is one thing that is right out of the, the gate here. The, the plunger physics are consistent. Um, once you find the sweet spot, you can always get the skill shot given a, a certain thing you need to shoot. But you can't get an accurate gauge of where that is. You have to use a carpet and dots yeah. on the carpet and yeah. things like that. And it varies based on what view you're looking at um, as to where the dots are on the carpet. So just give us the view. Rather than switching to the front of the cabinet in skill shot mode, actually give us a view of the plunger lane so that we can actually see the plunge being pulled back, see where the tip is in relation to the guide, and then make accurate plunging decisions based on that. That's what I want. Um, try using the uh, Magna save at some point. Yeah, I'm going to if I can remember to. <laughs> Before I blow. Because I have questions about the Magna save. Um, it's been mm. a long time since I've played an actual World Cup soccer. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the strength of the magnet is. The I strength don't... of the magnet will take the ball away from its center drain and snap it to the left flipper. That's okay. what it's designed to do. Um, is there any delay with the magnet activating? No. It's okay. instantaneous. When you when you hit that button, it turns on immediately. Okay. So, which is not the case in this game. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Sometimes it seems instantaneous. Other times it seems uh, delayed. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Get us to a point where hopefully I'll remember like to do it. Up the ramp, like if, do a bad shot up the left ramp or something like that. Yeah, we'll see what else. Even there. Get a little center drain action going. Well, I want a, a ball hurtling. You want some. Like, okay, here we go. Yep, yeah, that's okay. about right. That was pretty powerful. Yep. Now, yeah. would it normally do that little. Um, <laughs> yes. It does. Yeah, it, do it does. It doesn't lock the ball, it doesn't snap the ball to the, um, the target, which is why you have to do it with the flipper down. Okay. Uh, it needs to settle. It's a little bit like the the Magna save on Theater of Magic, where the ball sort of has a bit of a wobble to it as okay. it stabilizes. Yep. See if so that's saved it there. <laughs> that is normal. It, the reason being is that there's the magnet isn't um, protruding through the playfield, so it doesn't have the oh okay. contact with the ball. So okay. it's essentially like think of it like the Twilight Zone magnets. Well, you know how Doctor um, Dude. Um, when it first came, it was just like it felt like the playfield was all of a sudden ice. Yes. Uh, you know, and the, uh, like it could pull from anywhere. It, it not only pulled, but it was like that hit a slingshot effect where that ball just like ricocheted around. Um, yeah. Sometimes well, still ricocheting when the magnet stopped. <laughs> yeah, true. But the thing with Doctor Dude is that its magnet protrudes uh, okay. through the playfield, so it's actually got the metal contact for the magnet that sticks through the playfield. Um, whereas this one is a sub playfield magnet, very much like, um, think of the magnet behavior on the power field in yes. the Twilight Zone, and you can see the similarities in um, behavior in this. Now, what I found is if you want to go do the TV mode, you can do a late shot from the, the into the left slingshot, 
and it will most times go into the, the TV award hole. So if you leave it towards the, the bottom of the flipper, do a, a flip over to it, it will often go in, which is very useful when you're in final draw mode. Um, now, relighting the Magnus save is on the right-hand side. I think it's the orange target near the um, the right-hand side, which, if you think about it, is, right you know, yeah, that's right. The right where there. that uh, orange ball is. That's right, yeah. But, you know, the funny thing is that, <laughs> and this is not obviously not a critique on Zems, it's a critique on the uh, location of that target in the game. It's like, so you're going for the Magnus save target, it's danger because it's right near the out lane. It's risky as anything to get that shot. Um, and then what will normally happen is, it will be a nice shot on the final draw. Uh, I love the sound in this game. The, the, I will I will often let it sit in the plunger lane and just do that drum loop over and over again. Just love it. Um, they really, uh, like the, the, the feel and energy of the music in this game is just part of the, the reason why I love it so much. Like it's just got a really good aesthetic to it. Oh, nice shot and goal. Um, now you got to shoot the ramps, obviously, to relight, or you can shoot the, um, the free kick saucer um, up the top there, and that'll also give you a relight. I think all four of the switches will give you a relight as well, so if you shoot all the stars, you will relight the jackpot that way as well. So there's a number of different ways you can get the jackpot. Um, and the other thing to think about, too, is don't forget about your um, free tickets on the ramp. Because the tickets um, will get you through the cities, and when you get all the cities unlocked, that's when you get the essentially the wizard mode. Okay, now watch um, this. Should it do that? Uh, what kick out and then drop? Yes, because it kicks um, out right between the flipper and the uh, uh, and the metal. You know, basically going right at the uh, the crux of the flipper there, instead of bouncing it over to the right flipper. So that's, that's another should, question I have. Shouldn't it go dead pass over to the right? I think... Uh, yeah, I don't think it should actually do what it does there. It should actually have some contact on the flipper. Normally, with these games are designed to put the ball back onto the flipper again so that you can take a shot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That, that would have been... A good time to use Magnus. Wouldn't have. Yeah, that so. would have been. That would have really done a test. Now, the other interesting thing to try is that um, when you're when the ball is beneath the playfield, oh, beneath the flippers. Oh yeah, um, you can still pull it up sometimes. You can still do that, and that's not correct. So that's when the magnet is overpowered. Is overpowered. I think the. The Magnus save deactivates when you go down an outlane. So if it hits a switch going down the outlane, you can't use it. So even if you press the button, it won't work. Some of you um, might be wondering how is Magnus save activated? Uh, it's Zen has this keyed in like they do with all of their own originals and Magnus save, and that it is on the launch button of your controller. Um, yes. We're gonna we're gonna go on a little uh, rant here in a moment. Uh, a little bit later about that, but just so you know, that's how it's actually uh, functioning. Yep. They have not mapped us a uh, second set of flipper buttons like the actual machine has. That's right. There are pros and cons to that. Um, for me, the pro is that you, your finger's normally sitting on that button anyhow, so it yes. makes it easier to, to manage, which it sort of takes away from the intent of the buttons like that when you're playing the game. It, there's actually a risk-reward um, quotient in there when you're going for a Magnus save or using a secondary button because often you have to take your finger off the pinball, the, off the flipper button to do it. Whereas in this case, you've got all flip, or basically contact with all three control surfaces in the game. Um, so the risk is slightly diminished in digital. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's like it's something to note. Because um, if this, were, for example, if that button control was on a shoulder button, you would have to either be holding your controller in a really awkward way. Have you ever tried to play um, a game that requires you to use all shoulder buttons at the same time? It feels really weird. On Certainly on an Xbox controller, maybe not so much on a PlayStation controller, but 
Um, no, it feels that's very why I play with the PlayStation controller because I don't hold my controller to have all fingers on uh, both the, sh the shoulder and trigger buttons. Uh, whereas if I play with an Xbox controller or a uh, Switch Pro controller, I feel like all my fingers are there on all buttons, and it doesn't. I feel like I'm gripping the controller more than yeah. I like a, a nice loose uh, feel. Feel. Mm. Um, this is where obviously playing with a pin sim controller um, is better. Is much better. <laughs> you know, which you have. Which I do yeah. have. Yeah, which isn't connected most of the time. Well, I uh. haven't connected it yet to this because um, oh, I use it control. for. Uh, cabinet mode, and oh yeah, as there hasn't really been, you know, obviously the uh, the bare introduction of cabinet mode has been put into play with pin yeah, effects, yeah. and uh, it's not really worth getting set up no. at the stage for it because it's not really working that well. Yeah, and you know, everyone knows it's not working well, but it's you know, it's there just to have minimum functionality. Yeah. The other thing that's different in this as well, and I don't know whether it's in enhanced or standard is the color of the rail um, leading from the striker's hideout to the the right Shall we find out? Turn lane. Yeah. So that should be gold. Where? The, the railing. Uh, the, the, the habit rail. Um, you mean... Yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be chrome. That up here? Yeah, that, that is not... That whole um, habit trail is chrome. gold? Yeah, it's got a gold tinge to it. On the ones I've played, it has. Hmm. Anyhow. I'm pretty sure. There's actually one over in a place um, that I do it. And I distinctly remember that it's got a different tinge to that. I should watch... Again, um, there's a uh, YouTuber, Kerry Hardy, uh, who has recently uh, built up his World Cup. And he he goes all out with his... Uh, full customization. Full customization. So I'd be very curious. I'll have to uh, look up his video and see what he's done with that habit trail. Yeah, maybe, look, maybe my experience with it is different. Perhaps someone's, you know, re-powder, uh, not powder coated, re-chromed it yeah. and put a different anodizing uh, thing over the top, but I'm pretty sure it's not chrome. I could be wrong. It, I mean, it would be a, I think I'm actually wrong because um, it'd be a pretty big oversight for it not to texture it right when it's such a big object in the game. Well, it also like, seems pretty... like something that I would be an extra cost for Bally, and I don't see them having done that. Well, they did on Indiana Jones. Well, but Indiana Jones was a whole different story, and that's Williams, too. Well, I mean, I, I get it. They're both Bally the Williams, company. same company. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so, well, not they weren't always. There was a certain time period when they weren't, but... Uh... They weren't, but in that era, they were. Um, so, I don't know. That's something minor. Um, but, I don't know. I think, uh, shall we go into the, the whole point about um, Magna Save area and, you know, where everything sits? Um, good shot. Now, should we th talk about button mappings? Button mapping. So here's my request uh, to Zen. And then I've had this request in for a very long time, basically ever since I built before I built my pin sim, because I built my pin sim with two flipper buttons on each side. I actually yep. put in a third button <laughs> that is my Y button so that I could activate uh, Zen original power-ups um, right there at my fingertip rather than having to uh, reach up Press to the, the top. top uh, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Even Pinball Arcade had... Oh, see, there it goes. Wow, it just goes out that lane Bumps up. Um, even Pinball Arcade allowed us to do two sets of flipper buttons. Um, mm. There are tables that require two sets of flipper buttons that have not been put into Zen yet. Yes. Um, but they're maybe on the way. Uh, I think most famously, you have a table like uh, the Shadow, where you need to be able to alternate the uh, the diverter lanes. Yeah, uh, the Furbers. That's right. On yeah. both yeah. left and right side. Um, That's right. A machine like uh, Black Knight has Magna Save on left and right in lanes, and so it's it's not just triggering both of them at the same time. You actually are choosing which lane to light. And Johnny Mnemonic, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it has the uh, the buttons left and right. Uh, what happens if you were another good example is Demolition Man, where it has triggers on the um, 
the actual big control things that stick up from the cabinet if you play and the that flippers, way, yeah. which you should because you get a thousand a million points per combo extra if you do oh. um so yeah it's worth worth the money if you uh if you use the triggers and you should um on that game so well, but you I mean, would have no to have going to put triggers triggers no but if you had two secondary buttons you could have the trigger buttons as flips um, and you also have the cabinet buttons as flips, so you can get around that uh, that way. Point um, being, it seems kind of silly that Zen has yet to allow us to do that, to have a second set of flipper buttons. Uh, even just right now, the choice is you can either use the triggers to flip or you can use the shoulder buttons to flip. Um, yeah. But why not just already have it mapped? Uh, even better yet, how about just letting us plane map the controller wherever the heck we want? Yep. Um, you know, if I want to plunge using a trigger button, let me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't understand what the, the thinking there is. Uh, because, fine, set the game up like you have it right now, where it's going to use the base set of, of function fun uh, button functions. Mm -hmm. Um... That way, you know, if you're putting out a arcade one-up cab that only has a single set of buttons, yeah, it still works that way. But give us that option. Let us let us tweak it. Um, the other reason why this is kind of coming up with this particular table, um, as was pointed out to me, right below the plunger, there's a button that's an extra ball plunger. Yes, or not buy -in button. extra ball button. Yeah, it's for buy-in at the end of the game if you want to do buy-in. Right, which obviously Zen doesn't need the buy-in function. Mm. Uh, buy-in is available on most of the late model Bally Williams. Because, like, I know Roadshow had the buy-in. and Yep, um, all of them do. It's yeah, a way to get maximum dollars from yes. the player. But here's the thing. In-game, it actually has a purpose. Now, this is a purpose that I was not aware of. I think it's Nor a, was I. I think 99.9% .9 of players out there, unless you're a tournament player, don't know about it. I looked it up on Pinball Arcade, and there was no mention made of this. But basically, when you're doing um, multiball, and I don't know if it's when you're doing only wizard multiball or if it's uh, any multiball, if you get down to your last ball, I think it is, you can push that extra ball and it'll launch another ball. Yep. It'll take you back from death. Yeah, take you back from you death. You get a one shot at it, though. It's only once per game. Um, but obviously, there is absolutely no possible way to activate that here. No. Um, the other issue is when you are doing the wizard mode, uh, you have to physically launch the multiballs. Yes, you do. Well, what if you were saving that magma save? But now you well, have to launch your ball. You push yeah, that, you're going to both activate magma save and launch your ball at the same time. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's where you're kind of crippling yourself with the dual functionality. Um, yeah. You really need that extra set of flipper buttons that are assignable. You need the primary flipper buttons and secondary flipper buttons. Yeah. And then the ability to flip those. At a minimum, like at the first iteration of this, you would basically flip it so your primary buttons are either on the triggers or the shoulder buttons, and that's that's your first iteration of this. Yeah. Like transitioning over to it, and then subsequent iterations are well, let me just remap every button anywhere, and like have you know hit the left and right flipper buttons on the uh, the the left the right side of the controller if I want. Yeah. If you're some sort of crazy person. Um, but yeah, give me that choice. Let me do a, a ridiculous controller mapping scheme. Also, for people who are building cabinets, let them have the option of assigning whatever button they want wherever so that their interface um, is flexible and allows them to customize it to their needs. You could even have, in most cases, you could have a, a global setting for your flipper buttons and then on a per game basis, change the mappings to suit a particular game and its specific requirements based on your input. That I also, would love, also I would love to be, have it that way. And then while we're at it, mm. uh, how about that uh, keeping the ROM state stay, uh, carrying over? But, you know. Well, that'd be nice. I don't know. I mean, yes, I would. That, that's always a yes for me. Like, yeah, please let me retain my vault letters in, in Save Cracker so I can get vault multiple. Because uh, I, I don't know a way of getting it at the moment. I've never been able to get it, and I play that game a lot. Um, but yes, you're right, that too. 
but you know, let's just start with the control scheme. Also, remember too, and this is a probably a, something a lot of people don't think about, but for people um, who uh, have certain accessibility needs, yep, the ability to remap controllers is actually an accessibility requirement. And while there is some flexibility at the moment, like limited flexibility about where you map and the fact that you use either shoulder buttons and map, some people who perhaps have arthritis or have other sort of um, let's just call it if you have a single-handed need, you're screwed. Yeah, you you can't play. Yeah, so you know if you wanted to, you could actually have left and right flippers on just one one side of the um, controller scheme. You know, and it's actually like when you think about it, the more you think about it, the more Zen needs to address this as a as a an issue both for player satisfaction generally, but also for accessibility in the game. Uh, we're gonna play pro mode. Yep. I actually found pro mode to be pretty good on this, actually. Like it felt more natural to me, strangely I'm, I'm enough. Curious, I'm gonna shoot the TV award and see how it uh, launches in pro mode. Yeah, okay. It you can shoot the TV award. Yeah. Bigger. I do like the thing about this game is it actually works better if it plays fast. And <laughs> I I loaded up Pimble Arcade's version. Floaty McFloat face. Oh my goodness is it floaty. And it plays yep. <laughs> dreadfully slow. Yep. But like almost EM slow. It's yeah. ridiculous. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, let's see if you can get it in there. Uh, I think oh, oh. In pro mode, you have to aim for the red targets in the left ramp, and that will that will get you a ricochet into the the TV mode. But it's a little bit hard to shoot in the right flipper if you're trying to aim for it for some reason. Nearly got it. We'll get there. So yeah, it's got a really good like the the pro mode in this. I actually quite enjoyed. Like it, I got a reasonable score in pro mode. I think um, during the the beta for it. Um, I actually got, during the press preview for this, I think I've got like a 3 billion score on it, which is oh, goodness. pretty good. Uh, I don't think that's the head, I don't think that's in the leaderboards though, because they're segmented when we're in press preview, which is a shame, because it was valid. <laughs> and nothing's really changed you know, this, between then and now. So. This is feeling very much like what an arcade is, where it's just like yeah, this is, house balling. This is how, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, this is how it plays, absolutely how it plays in the place that has it on the floor. Uh, it's, you know, you're, you're flat out getting a billion score on the one in the, uh, the, the arcade that has it. Um, so, yeah, it's quite accurate from that perspective. Um, there we go. Okay, let's see, let's see how it ejects. Let's, let's see how it ejects. Right. That's how I expect that's it That's better. To. That's better. It should be wild, and it should absolutely go to the right flipper. Yes, so, so that you can immediately, because apparently there's a trick here. If you yeah. can hit uh, three goals in three seconds, you get, like, an even bigger score. Oh, you do? Uh, apparently. But So if you go, like, basically up, down, bang, bang, yes. bang, yes. you get bonus points here. So you're going to need that eject to go to the right flipper so you can immediately shoot the goal. Oh, so it's three seconds from the point it ejects. Yes. No. Ooh. Well, I, I mean, because it's on the countdown timer, right? Yeah, right. But that countdown timer pauses while it's... Uh, oh, Jesus. oh, yeah, I understand what you mean. So at the point at which the game starts counting down, yes. that's when the, the opportunity to get the extra points is... Yes. Yeah, quick quick goals. So, right. There you go. I didn't know that. So, see, there's lot, this is a good thing about this game. There's lots of little hidden hidden tweaks to it. One thing I did notice, though, and it's like the, one of the things you you get pretty much instantly when you shoot a ramp is the ascending ah, and it, as it goes around, it's a really cool sound effect. But sometimes that doesn't trigger. Yeah. Um, there, there's certain times when you don't get that, and I think that's an effect that, that triggers most of the time. So, and also that gate on the right is floppy as anything. It shouldn't be that mobile. Like, have a look at the uh, the gate on the left ramp. It's pretty stable, but at one point that that gate was wiggling around like really violently. Which one, the, the right gate. or Maybe the left? The right one. Oh, oh no, like they stabilize it. Yeah, it should be like swing, swing, and that's it. It shouldn't have that much like like momentum going like that. Also, there was a. I think they've patched it since it was first released, but the 
the gate was constantly swinging. It was just like going backwards and forwards with the vibration of the table, which was also wrong. So I think they must have done some tuning to the gate, which is good. Uh, so there you big, so get your big, and then you get your 30 mil. It's a very satisfying table to shoot. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Um, even though it's great. Even points. though it can feel like a one-shot table, the ball is wild enough that it doesn't ever feel like you're only shooting one shot. Um, no, no. That left it's, orbit feels... is not easy to hit. The ramps no, are not, not necessarily easy to hit. Um, That's right. You've got to be pretty precise in the ramps because if you don't do it with a nice clean shot, you'll come straight back down at you and they're danger. Like they're, they're lined up in quite a, an awkward position. Um, so, yeah. There's, there's risk in this game for sure, which is, you know, why you play pinball at the end of the day. I think initially when I first seen this table, I uh, wasn't thrilled with it because it feels like it has that pinch point between the ball and uh, the ramp. So it's almost like it's a figure eight. Yeah. Um, Have they fixed up the tuning in Pro where you shoot the left ramp and it sometimes hard rejects back down it? No, no, we'll find out. I, yeah, try that. This is only in Pro mode I noticed this. Where the oh, gate is. So when we had the press preview, um, you couldn't, in pro mode, you couldn't shoot either ramp. It would reject yep. the ball. <laughs> yep. They, oh, they, they've they made it slippery it. enough that the ball can go yeah. now. Yeah. No, it's like a, it's definitely a, a surprise. Whoa, it, it, it would like hit a brick wall and literally came straight back down at you at speed. Yeah. Well, I mean, so just like, then. Okay. But... I think that was because you didn't quite get a clean shot up there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to let this just uh, I'm just gonna do it final draw. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna let it eject and see what happens. Uh. You don't need that third ball anyhow. Get rid of no. Third ball in the bin. Distraction. In the bin. In the bin. You don't need it. So he's. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know what the purple flippers are in regular, um, in the regular, oh, like, so. non-enhanced mode. Ew. It shouldn't be purple. No, they shouldn't, should they? That looks no. really strange. <laughs> yeah, they definitely shouldn't be purple. Uh, I don't know where this purple's come from, so that's, that's a bug. Uh, it, could, it doesn't match anything. There's nothing on the play field on that should table. be like that. Well, hold on. There's... There is, no, it's a different color purple. I was going to say, there is purple on the table, but it's a different color purple. No, nah, it that shouldn't green be like they, feels... sh they, should, they should be green. That's the color that they are normally. Pretty sure. Because everything else on that lower half of the playfield is green. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're, they're toned in green with the playfield. In fact, all the ones I've played on have been green bats. So that's just the standard. So maybe I, they switched it around. I maybe tried activating thought, the magnet and nothing happened. No, no bueno. Because it went down the out lane, and yeah. when it goes down the out lane, you can't use it. No, the magnet showed that it was activating. Oh, okay. But... Um, I don't know, do we have any other thoughts on this one? Mm, not really, I think we've done it all. You know, we've set uh, our piece. Uh, let's put it to you this way. Worth the $10. Yes. And that's not just because we've got it for free. Like, it actually is really, really nice recreation. Um, I would easily pay 10 credits for, for this, i.e. 10 bucks, dollar a game. No problems at all. Uh, I've spent way more on this game than that over the years, and this is a like really fun way of playing it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very playable, solid table. Um, yep. It does make you want to play over and over again. Yeah, it's got that comeback factor for sure on it. The only thing I can say is it makes me really want Super League. <laughs> yeah, where is Super League? Because I've... this... See, the difference between this and Super League, Super League, you're playing for goals and trying yeah. to actually defeat the other team. Yeah. Um, here, goal is just what you do in order to uh, light things. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's it's right. It's not actual... The, the, the amount of goals you hit doesn't matter in terms of if you're beating the other team or not until the wizard mode. That's right. And until, well, 
to the multi ball where you have to use the jackpot. But um, you're right, it doesn't play as big a role as the Super League football goal mechanic does. Super League football is like the NBA fast break of yeah. Zen tables. Like, you, you score points. You're actually playing soccer on that table. Yeah. And that's what makes it so awesome. And the other thing with Super League is that... Oh, goodness. Um, like you got the ball safe. <laughs> uh, you know, we obviously haven't seen it since Pinball Fest 2. In yeah. that time, obviously, the graphics have been enhanced, the physics have been enhanced, and ah. that table is a lead ball table. Oh, it is very much a lead ball table. And so I would love to experience playing it with these new physics and have the better visuals. Um, oh, it'd be a totally different game. Oh, it'd be just incredible. So, yeah. come on, Zen, where's Super League? You you paid the money for, for FIFA. I know Super League's not FIFA, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's not, I don't think. Um, but the they also don't it. need to use the teams. They could just do what they eventually did, which was just have Zen, the Zen yeah. team. Just do that. Um, no I'm licensing gonna... at all required. Mm -hmm. At all. Exit out of this whole uh, Megillah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, let me, uh, let me get back into things here. Ah, give me control, give me control. My mouse button. There it is. Give Doop. it to me. There we go. Um... What I was going to say, uh, yeah, Super League, you just have the Zen team, and the, the teams you play against are all just generic. Um, you know, it's Germany, it's Italy. It's not like they're not saying that you're playing, you know, uh, Real Madrid or anything. <laughs> no, no, they're just countries. Yeah. so Which, which is very much the case in, in World Cup Soccer 94 as well. So, yeah. Yeah. It's um, a very easy way of getting around the problem. So you get around that. The one thing that they absolutely 100% for sure would need to uh, fix with Super League. <laughs> so Super League has uh, various uh, Zen staff members on the screen. Oh, yeah. Or on the yes. play field, of which I'd say three quarters of them no longer work for Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So it would be nice to... I mean, like, Mel's not even on the table. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, update the roster. Update that roster, <laughs> um, please. Yeah. Uh, it, would, it, would be, uh, it would be fun to see um, to do that. Uh, but I think it would be... I don't know. I like World Cup Soccer a lot. Um, but every time I play Super League, it's a blast. Yeah, it so. is. It's a great table. I miss it quite a lot, actually. Until you started reminding me about it, I thought, oh, yeah, that goal mechanic in it is so satisfying of that upper play field. Like having all the moving, like this is a, that's a really good example where moving cardboard targets make a lot of sense up the top of the play field. Yes. And, and it's definitely a table that probably you could not do in real life because of the amount of cardboard cutout targets that are up. I was going to say the, the amount of cardboard targets is the, uh, is the issue uh, that upper, the uh, tell you what, folks, I'm making this, I'm making an executive call right now, Jared. Next episode, mm -hmm. we're playing Super League. <laughs> okay, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. We're going to play Super League and so that we can really uh, get into it and talk about it because, like, God, I just love it, and I have a blast playing it. It's so good. It. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, physically, there is some engineering that would have to go on to make it a real table. Table. Um, yeah. Just because of the upper play field is where all the cardboard cutouts are. That being said, the rest of the table... Would, it's very vanilla it, pinball. Yeah. It, it yeah, very easily could be translated into real pinball. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, is that that machine is designed for long play. I mean, oh, yeah, geez. long play. <laughs> yeah. It's a marathon table. It's a table that I can sit down for 45 minutes and play. Um, Pretty much the length of a match. Yeah. Like, it's designed to almost feel like a football match when yeah. you're playing it. Which, so, and, and again, since we're going to play it, uh, I won't go too in-depth. We'll point it out when we're actually playing it. There's a couple of points where after you score, or like halftime, it's just like, can we be done yet? Can we yeah, please the, just the, get back into playing? <laughs> the the halftime celebration stuff gets old after a while. Yeah, some missteps. So, so it would be lovely if Zen also revisited the code on that. Yeah, they did They did a Mars on it. Yeah. Yes. You give us a Mars pass on it. So yeah. anyway, we'll, we'll see what uh, what comes of that. I don't know. I'd, I'd like it a lot. Yeah. That'd be a great game to get back into again. Um, before we go, let's talk TV real quick. Oh yeah, okay. Um, have you been? Did you watch Rings of Power? 
Uh, no. Okay. Folks, Rings of Power, don't sleep on it. It's pretty dang good. Um, oh, okay. It's, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, Second Age. Um, yeah. It's obviously not as quick as the movies. Um, I know that there's some Tolkien heads that are losing their minds over alterations or whatever. Having never read Tolkien other than The Hobbit, and I didn't enjoy that, um, it plays perfectly fine. Like, I'm not bogged down by all the, hey, elves have to have long hair and elves can't be of color and all this other crap that people are losing oh, their brains over. Oh, who cares about that? That's yeah. just noise. Yeah. Um, but That's in terms noise. of story, I found it really enjoyable. Um, yeah. How about House of Dragon? Were you watching that? Uh-uh. I don't have any interest in watching anything to do with Game of Thrones at all. Ah, uh, okay. Well. No. Just so. not, it's not the franchise for me. I've been watching other things. Okay. Um, um, I was just going to say, so, superb acting. Just yeah. brilliant acting in it. Um, and then the last show that I'm going to mention, which is currently uh, airing right now, is Andor, which is... Oh, yes. Great. You're, you're watching... Oh, yes, I'm watching that. Really, 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 really good. It should make for a really interesting binge watch once it's done. Um, here's the thing. Mm. It's obviously a prequel to Rogue One. I didn't care for Rogue One. Like, I know a lot of people were like, oh, what's the best Star Wars movie beyond Empire? And I was like, well, yeah, the last 45 minutes are good, but I couldn't have cared less about almost any of the characters. Yeah, all the insurgency and stuff like that at the beginning made it a bit of a slow march, didn't it? yeah. And so yeah. here's the thing, though, having now watching Andor and now caring about Andor and knowing who he is, I think it's going to completely change how I view that film. Um, it I'm not going to rewatch you... it until it's done so that I can yeah. get that pr perspective. This is the great thing about the these sort of splinter things that are coming out on TV. They're filling in some of the, the backstory that you just don't have time to fill in in a movie. Um and it gives you that richness of the universe um, that gets filled in. You know? And, you know, I'm not usually a prequel guy. I mm. Because to me, prequels, you already know the ending. So the suspense of whether a character is going to survive or not is spoiled for me. Yeah, that's um, not the case in Andor, though. Like, it's the storytelling in this is really good. It is. It's well it's, it's And it's doing really nice dovetails. And it's telling us mm. a different part of this story which is we didn't know how he got to where he was in Rogue One um, mm. and so we're we're doing that I don't know it's just I don't know what it is about this prequel that's hitting me um, in all the right ways uh, I think and again I know you don't care about House of the Dragon but House of the Dragon is doing it right in terms of it's going 137 years before the events of Game of Thrones so um, mm. again I don't know the fate of any of these characters because uh, right. none of these yeah. characters are going to be or alive. In throat. They're not alive by that time. So yeah. that plays much better for me. Um, yeah, and that's a really good point, isn't it? Like when you're doing prequels, sitting it a generation behind is actually almost better because yeah. you don't have the baggage. You can actually really like make the story unique and not yeah. have to so much look at the canon that um, it already exists. Yeah. So um, that's good. Other things that are going on TV wise, I, I I gave up on the new Doctor Who after about three quarters of the way through season one. <laughs> I just okay. it just never grabbed me. Uh, it was the writing, it was the way it was filmed, the look, just nothing grabbed me. So I gave up on it. Well, I guess they just uh, had their final episode with this Doctor and did the regeneration. So I was like, mm. yeah, what the hell? I don't care. I'll watch the regeneration. Yeah. Crap! Now I have to watch. <laughs> All right. Okay. Because <laughs> of where the regeneration is going, and what? So I'll just say this: the showrunner, um, uh, Moffat. Uh, I forget what his name, his first name is, but last name is Moffat. Um, he's the one that brought Doctor Who back into the forefront with uh, uh, Christopher Eccleston was the first guy. Oh, right, then, okay. Uh, Tennant, and then Matt Smith, um, and then he left. I think it went off the rails midway a bit. <laughs> through. Oh, I, I don't know if he did the Capaldi series or not. Hmm. Um, he might have left by that point. And then he had nothing to do with this Jodie Whittaker uh, series. Um, but he's coming back. And right. seeing the 
who they regenerated or what that is, and knowing that he's responsible, that's where I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get back into. So I'm gonna. This could actually be starting to get good again. Yeah, so I'm gonna slog through yeah. the <laughs> the remaining two seasons of of her run just to see it, um, and then All I right. just I decided. Uh, did you ever watch Fargo? Not the movie, but the TV show. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think I did. Um, Fargo is a brilliant TV show. Um, every bit as good as the movie, if not better. Um, right. Now, Joel and Ethan Cohn did the movie. They have next to nothing to do with the TV show. Um, yes, their name is slapped on as executive producers, but I guarantee you they didn't do squat on this. This show right, okay. is uh, the baby of Noah Hawley. Um, Noah Hawley also did the TV show Legion, which is an offshoot of X-Men, which is also just a bug nuts, bonkers, brilliant TV show. All um, right. But so I decided I'm going to rewatch, I'm rewatching Fargo, but I'm going to watch it in chronological order. <laughs> oh, so uh, a little bit like the, uh, the way you watch Star Wars, um, movies. Yes. Yeah, so what that means is I'm watching season four first, and then I'll watch season two, and then I'll watch season one, and then I'll watch season three. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's uh well because crazy. because season four takes place in 1950, um, season two takes place in the 70s, I believe. Mm. Season one takes place in the 90s, and season three, I think, takes place either in the late 90s or the early 2000s. I'm not sure mm-hmm. which. Um, it's not that the shows are necessarily they don't lock in and relate to each other except for seasons one and two have a through line um okay but uh there are references to events of prior seasons in these shows um Hmm. and that's what i'm trying to kind of like see if there's any deep deep thread going on there (laughs) Um, okay interesting yep what i've been watching recently i've just started up on um Oh, the new season of Central Park, uh, the animated series is is I'm getting through that at the moment, which is really fun. Um, the there's a new Amazon Prime series called the. Uh, I knew this would happen. I forget the name of <laughs> it. Um, it's uh, it, the premise is really good um, on it though. Um, it is uh, sort of like I think a little bit like Ready Player One. Kind of. Is this but, the thing with the uh, Chloe Grace Moretz? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's it's set in London and a Midwest um, okay. US state, and it's like a seventy years in the future thing premise. Um, really captivating story. Uh, I'm hooked as heck with it already. Okay. Um, and I'm watching it episode by episode, so it's unfolding week mm-hmm. by week. Um, highly recommended. Um, get on it uh, or wait until you can binge it at the end. But honestly, it's almost good that it's been playing out episode by episode because um, it really keeps you hanging. Like the suspense in this is actually quite good to actually experience, not have it like one after the other. So yeah, get on it now if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. Uh, last thing I'm going to mention TV wise, uh, just because I only discovered it this past summer, uh, the beginning of the summer, uh, Gangs of London. Uh, mm. Their second season is about to start uh, midway through November. Um, Gangs of London is created by <sighs> Gareth. I can't remember his last name. Anyway, it's the guy that did the raid, the two raid movies. Um, mm-hmm. He's a fantastic director. Um, insane on action. Gangs of London. Uh, you remember that movie Snatch? Yes. Okay. Imagine... Snatch, but deadly serious. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Um, it's brutal. It is because you're dealing. You know, there's it's you know there's pikeys and there's your classical London gangster and uh, it's modern times. Um, mm. But uh, it, it's all the various uh, kinds of gangsters that are very much uh, London based uh, that I know of from movies. I've never been to London. Don't know anything about the gang culture, but, um, uh, yeah. but it just reminded me a lot of if it was snatch without, uh, the humor, <laughs> which might sound right. like a miserable time, but <laughs> I'm telling you, 
this Gareth is he's an amazing director, an amazing storyteller, and don't sleep on this series. So right, there you go. Get there on it. Lots All of right. things to watch. Lots of things. Mm. All right. Well, we're gonna call it a day here. Um, yeah. like I said next time. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, next it time. It wasn't that long a show. <laughs> no, not that long. I know, not what we've been currently doing. Um, yeah. No, next time, like I said, I'm calling it. We're playing uh, Super League. So if you're into that, you're right. we're going we're gonna to play that. Uh, whether we have Jared's favorite things to talk about, the stuff and things, we'll have to see. But until then, mm. ta ta. Bye, everyone. <laughs>